Hello, I'm Coach Dave Palladino. I, with Coach Dwayne Breisinger, Coach Johnny Linden, and Coach Drew Lysick run Palladino Martial Arts. This is the second session in which I show you how to wrap your hands. The first session involved my showing you how to wrap the hands of your fighter. In this session, I'll show you how to wrap your own hands as a fighter or even as a coach who wants to spar with his fighter. First thing you do is, and I, I, I'm a hot dog, I, I throw my hand wraps out a lot of times. We have a pretty clean floor here. I like to, uh, I like to say that if, if, if all possible, try to, keep your, try to keep your hand wraps on something sanitary, something clean, a platform such as you have here. You can put your hand wraps on here while, they're being, while they're be your hands are being wrapped. Uh, you can throw them over your shoulder like I did in session one. Or you can, if you have a nice clean floor like we have here, you just throw them out there. And what I'll do is I'll throw them out there and I'll still put them on this platform since it's here because it's even cleaner than the floor. These are ringside products hand wrap, ringside products hand wraps. They show you what side to put down. That doesn't always mean it'll end up correctly as you saw on the last session. We had to create a fold to create the uh, correct Velcro hold. First thing you do is put the loop of the hand wrap over your thumb. Again, I, we will be able to be a little more creative with these hand wraps than we were in session one. These are a little longer. From the thumb loop, you can see that I have no creases, no folds, no twists in the loop. Creases, folds, twists in the loop or hand wrap will create discomfort for your fighter. From that point forward, yeah, you have a little fold there, but that's okay. As long as it's not coming around the loop around the web of your thumb. You want to try to keep everything as flat as possible. The wrist is your anchor. From the wrist around, you come down between the fourth and fifth phalange, the ring finger and my broken middle finger, uh, little finger. You try to stay as flat as possible here because that will, th this particular part of the wrap is to prevent cuts on your hand because this part of your hand during a fight is very prone to being cut. The skin is prone to being cut. So to keep the wrap from cutting it, you want the wrap as flat as you can get it. As flat as Ro the great General Robert E. Lee once said is as practical, practicable, he said. And you come through best you can flat and around the wrist, which is your anchor, whole way around. At this point, now you want to try to, as much as you can, as much as, as, much as practicable, try to keep a flat surface there. From the wrist, now you come back down between number two and number three phalanges, the f forefinger and the middle finger. At that point, you're coming down, and don't forget, like in the last section, we created a loop. It's, it's crossed this way here. It comes the same direction around. It's just a loop. It comes around. It doesn't, it doesn't change directions. It doesn't come down this way and then come back around this way, because if it did, it wouldn't be secure. From this point, we come around to the to between the forefinger and the ring finger, and we, coach, you might want to show me doing this. Your elbows are out. To make it easy for you, all you have to do is hold on there and go, bring your elbows in, and that will tell you what direction to go with the wrap when you create a flagpole. You see, you want a flagpole, and you want to go over top, over top, twisting in the direction the wrap is going to travel. So I come over top, twisting, as you're looking at it, it'd be to your left, over top to the left. And I create a flagpole, a nice long flagpole. Well, we don't want it too long, about like that, I suppose. And then again, I'll sit back down so Coach can get a good view. I create a flagpole and a flag. You can see that I try to keep it as flat as I can, as flat as that which is practicable. And... Uh, maybe I didn't do, maybe I need to just be a little more, one more flat pull there, one more, one more wrap around, tighter, tighter. You know, we don't want to kill, we don't want to kill the fighter, we don't want to, you know, squeeze his hands off, but we do want it to be firm around his wrists, through his fingers, and around his knuckles. I create the flag and the flag pull and come around. Now, at this point, I try to flatten things out best I can, because I don't want, as the fighter, I'm wrapping my own hands. I should have a feel for this. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I try to make it as flat as possible at this point. Now I come back down through, created a loop. I created a loop. Coming back down 
through this way. And again, over top in the direction in which the wrap travels. Now you see that the wrap traveled from here to here, this way. So we wrap it over top that way, and we create a crisscross pattern. Very, very dominant in the medical field, crisscross patterns. Crisscross patterns prevent the breaking of the metacarpal bones. So we create a flagpole, a flagpole, two flags, flat as we can make it. You can't always make it perfectly flat. Best you can do, do the best you can. And now at this point, as a fighter, you can even wrap it one more time around. So it's a nice tight flagpole. What this does is, as you coach shows on the camera, it creates a flat surface and protects the extensor tendons of your hand and it keeps them from becoming dislodged. It keeps them from becoming knocked off center. Mine were off center for years. You work them, you work them, you work them. You go to the doctors a few times and he works them and he gives you pain pills and eventually you can get them back pretty close to being in the middle again. To prevent them from getting knocked off center, you create flagpoles between your two knuckles so that you have a flat surface and your knuckles aren't taking all the brunt. One, two, three knuckles aren't taking the brunt of the, the impact. At this point, you close your fist and you bang it and make sure there aren't any real pings, tings, pains, any hurts. And when there aren't, you can continue and continue firmly. At this point, all the front of your knuckles are covered. All the fronts of your knuckles are covered. From here, you come back around the wrist, but go straight, straight down. Actually, I can come once around the wrist the whole way. And straight down to the middle finger that you now cover about right there. You're coming down, the bottom of the hand wrap should be about between the, 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 the knuckle of the little finger and the top knuckle and the bottom knuckle of, of the little finger. And my, my little finger looks a little odd. It was broken a few weeks ago. Uh, you come around and pull these knuckles together. To do this, you, you wrap it around and you torque the bottom of the wrap. You torque it so that it is firm. If you're a little loose up here, that's okay, but you need the bottom to be firm. Ideally, you want them both nice and firm, which is usually the result we get after a lot of experience of wrapping our hands. We come around, what this is doing is, it keeps the flagpoles from pushing into our knuckles so far that our knuckles spread apart. That's excru excruciatingly painful. I come around again, down, and around. I want to be able to see those flagpoles. I want to see those flagpoles. Down, around. And I'm torquing the bottom so that it won't come loose. And these are nice long hand wraps. Years ago I got these from Ringside Products out in Lenexa, Kansas if, you, if as a fighter. You should try to make a pilgrimage there. All fighters try to get there if they can. And see ringside products in Lenexa, Kansas. You might meet real famous fighters who also go out there when you do. At this point, I'm finished wrapping the bottom. I'm finished wrapping the knuckles, so I hold on with my thumb. Make a fist and rock. I feel no pings. I feel no tings. I feel no pain. I let go with my thumb and come around the wrist now. Around the wrist, nice and firm, because these pro ringside product wraps are pretty, pretty long. I can come up my wrist. What this will do is it'll protect the two, the two bones of your, your lower forearm. The, the ulna, which is here, and the radius, which is here. The radius radiates, rotates around the ulna. They will be protected by being held together by the wrap that you put around your lower forearm. And as you can see, the Velcro is not coming, is not going to stick because even though I put the side down that uh, the wrap said to put down, it just didn't come out right because of the flagpoles, the twists, the different ways you put it on. So we create a fold. In this case, we're pretty high up on the wrist, so we can actually go down on the fold nice fold we have no crinkles no wrinkles no twists no turns we don't want that because it'll make the fighter uncomfortable and it could 
It could cut his blood flow off so much that it, it, he, it can't be recovered and his hands become numb. Your fighters will, might tell you at, at, when you first wrap their hands that they're feeling a little numb or a little tingly or their blood flow is being cut off. Once they start moving, it comes right back. If you, if you torque, uh, twist, uh, crinkle the hand wrap while you're wrapping your fighter's hands, it will not come back. I come around after creating the fold and I have a nicely, a nicely wrapped hand all the way up almost to the middle of my forearm. Now I punch, punch, no tings, no pings, no pains, no hurts. Notice I didn't, I didn't go wrapping around my thumb. Uh, in my opinion, I'm not saying it, I'm, I'm right and everybody else is wrong, I'm just saying, in my opinion, this isn't as important as some people make it out to be. Uh, when you put on a pair of boxing gloves, the thumb is separate from the rest of the glove anyway. And, and if, you, if your fighter's holding his hand right, his thumb is up against the bottom part of his knuckles and it's not going to get hurt. He needs to just keep his hand tight, hold it tight, and throw the punches. If you have the hand, the wrap, wrap tightly enough around the, the um, upper me the metacarpal, the number one metacarpal, the thumb will be very safe. You can also, if, you, if you're a little more insecure about the way your fighter holds his hand, wrap it lower around the thumb if you want. But this, leaving the thumb free, also allows blood flow to, to come more fli thre freely to and through the hand. That's Coach Palladino's method of wrapping hands.